Mortal Kombat first landed in arcades in 1992, sending shockwaves throughout the industry. It was gory and violent, and also featured impressive realism for the time. Not everybody loved it, but nobody would be able to forget it. The series has had its ups and downs since then, but the fact that it's still around today has proven that Mortal Kombat had more staying power than anyone expected. With a history approaching three decades, Mortal Kombat has seen a lot of fighters come and go. Many of them are unforgettable, but an equal amount of them are unmemorable. One thing's for sure though, every game has given us at least a few new ones, and that means it is our sacred duty to rank them all from worst to best. But first, the ground rules. We will only be counting fighters from the mainline Mortal Kombat series. That means no spin-off games, which you should never play under any circumstances to begin with. We'll also not be counting guest characters from other series or franchises, including the DC Universe fighters. Don't worry though, that still leaves more than enough entries on this list. I promise. We will, however, be covering specific ports and re-releases, but only if the roster is different enough to warrant it. In terms of ranking, we will take into account fighting prowess, originality, mainstream popularity, and popularity within the competitive community. Also, we're considering how much we like them personally. So there. And as if that's not going to piss you guys off enough already, you'll see that all instances of the words Mortal Kombat have been abbreviated to MK on our text slates in the interests of saving space, except for the first game, given that it's literally just called Mortal Kombat. We're also using an irritating mixture of Roman numerals and standard digits, according to however the numbers in that game's title were officially stylized. It is going to hurt your eyes. And finally, it's not until one sits down to work on a list like this that it becomes abundantly clear just how tangled Mortal Kombat lore really is. It's a wash with multiple timelines, retcons, jokes, and contradictions. We've done our best to get things right, but inevitably, we've gotten things wrong. So go easy on us. We're nice people, I promise. Let's rank them. I'm Ben. And I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and this is every Mortal Kombat fighter ranked from worst to best. Number 77. Cobra. Mortal Kombat Deception, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Cobra, we hardly knew ye. Actually, there wasn't much to know about you in the first place, so I suppose we knew you quite well, all things considered. We at Triple Jump enjoy Street Fighter, to be clear, and it would be foolish to overlook the debt Mortal Kombat owes to that series, but unremarkable white guy in a gi is a character type that should have stayed in that franchise. Cobra appeared in Mortal Kombat Deception, and once more in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, before the developers realised that literally any other concept for a fighter would have been more interesting. Number 76. Su Hao. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. We know that ranking any fighter near the bottom of this list will lead to disagreement. In fact, you're probably typing disagreement right now! Don't forget to turn on caps lock. With Su Hao, however, even the creators disliked him. Artist John Vogel insisted that Su Hao's death in Deadly Alliance be considered canon. That was the character's debut, but Vogel disliked him so much that he never wanted to see him again. Of course, four years later, we got Armageddon with an everyone is here approach that saw Su Hao showing up once more. The developers killed him in that game as well, and nothing of value was lost. Number 75. Dramin. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Sentient beef jerky stick Dramin is another character we are definitely allowed to hate, as his creators couldn't stand him either. We're ranking him above Su Hao, almost exclusively on the grounds that he's more interesting to play as. Not fun, to be clear. No fun is to be had while Dramin is around, but his low speed and reliance on special moves means it takes a bit of work to get a handle on him. Is this an inherently good thing? No. New players will see that he controls like a wheelless shopping trolley and move along, but mastering him is an accomplishment in itself. Only joking, you wasted your life. Number 74. Meat. Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Ah, the joke character. A fighting game tradition nobody enjoys, has enjoyed, or ever will enjoy. 
The joke behind joke characters is nearly always, isn't it ridiculous that we would have bothered putting this in our game? Since game developers have a difficult time implementing their best ideas, we have to question the wisdom of devoting resources to implementing their worst ones. Meat was introduced as an easter egg in Mortal Kombat 4. Nobody cared then, and fewer people care now. Steve Barron, art director for the series, has joked that Meat has a cousin made of bones named Scully. I can't wait to me I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> Number 73. Bo Rai Cho. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat X. You know who I'd love to play as? Somebody who looks like he won't live through the night. Thank the Lord for Bo Rai Cho then, who is exactly one cheeseburger away from his fifth and final heart attack. The character was evidently introduced because series co-creator Ed Boon realised they didn't yet have a slobby character. And, well, yeah, the series is about superhumans fighting to the death, so slobby characters would probably fall at the first hurdle but here we are. Ed Boon got his wish, and now we get to light farts on fire to our heart's content. Number 72. Mocap, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Look, another joke character! We ranked this one higher than Meat on the grounds that he is not Meat. Mocap is a motion capture artist. Mocap is short for motion capture. Mortal Kombat has a habit of replacing C's with K's. Are you laughing? Are you laughing yet? I mean, I hope so. Otherwise, we'd have to wonder if Mortal Kombat knows what a joke even is. He's evidently a martial arts teacher who befriended Johnny Cage and flew to Hollywood to do motion capture work for a film and found himself in another dimension where he fights for the Earth Realm and also has telekinesis and... Uh, sorry, have you stopped caring? What a coincidence. So have I. Number 71. Nightwolf. Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat 11. Freshly released from his touring contract with the Village People, Nightwolf made his debut in Mortal Kombat 3, and he stuck around for a good number of games to follow. What also stuck around was a confused fan reception. Was he a positive portrayal of Native American nobility, or was he a lazy stereotype that did more harm than good? We'll give the developers the benefit of the doubt, but the fact that the debate continues to this day does suggest at least that they could have done a better job with Nightwolf. We admit that the implementation of spirit animals in Mortal Kombat 11 probably hasn't helped. Number 70. Striker. Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat 2011. Curtis Striker, a police officer with the abilities of a police officer was originally intended to appear in the first Mortal Kombat. He was cut, and the game was a massive hit. Maybe the developers should have taken that as a sign. As it stands, the unremarkable boy in blue appeared in several games over the years, but never to much renown. In the Defenders of the Realm cartoon, he was voiced by Ron Perlman. We'll give him some cool points for that, but Stryker has consistently been one of the least well-received characters in the series. Also, his intro quote, Police Brutality Coming Up, has not aged well at all, and, you know, good. Number 69. Nice. Kai. Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Remember Kai? Of course you don't. I'm talking about him right now and already I've forgotten him. Introduced in Mortal Kombat 4, which is a polite way of saying nobody cared about him to begin with, Kai was designed to be similar to Liu Kang, reflecting the fact that they trained together. That's ultimately the problem. He isn't a bad fighter or based on some irritating gimmick, he's just another guy who hits people in a series that has no shortage of guys who hit people. After three playable appearances, he was gone for good. I'll miss him whatever his name was. Number 68. Ashra. Mortal Kombat Deception and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Ashra is playable in two main games. One to say hello and one to say goodbye. We think that's more than enough. She had the potential to be interesting and even had a great signature weapon, the Chris, a wavy blade with a storied history in the real world. In the games, the Chris is said to cleanse the souls of the one who wields it, but some characters believe it actually corrupts the user instead. This feeds nicely into the fact that she doesn't have a firm good or bad alignment as most fighters do, though that could also be because she didn't stick around long enough to develop one. Number 67. Ermac. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat X. 
Like the others, but this one is red. Ermac was originally just a word that appeared on the original arcade game's audits menu. It was short for Error Macro, but seeing it on the same list as other actual fighters led fans to assume that someone named Ermac was unlockable. Electronic Gaming Monthly threw fuel on the fire by publishing a number of falsified photos and methods for unlocking the character, you know, in case ethics in games journalism seems like a recent concern. Ermac was finally created for Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, which we think was the series' way of saying, okay, shut up now. Number 66. Tremor, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat X. Like the others, but this one is brown. Tremor is an Earth Elemental, which means all of his moves involve dirt until the developers run out of ideas and give him fire instead. Tremor has only been playable in two games, the Vita version of Mortal Kombat 2011 and Mortal Kombat X as a DLC. He was originally planned for Mortal Kombat Trilogy in 1996, but was ultimately replaced by Rain. The fact that Mortal Kombat dug him up 15 years later might demonstrate how low on ideas the series was running. Fun fact, Tremor is the only Mortal Kombat fighter who canonically lost to Kevin Bacon. Number 65. Havoc. Mortal Kombat Deception and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Originally designed as an alternate costume for Noob Saibot, Havoc is every bit as disposable as that implies. He looks and plays like he was constructed from leftover parts that no other fighter particularly wanted. He debuted in Mortal Kombat Deception, where his name was almost Scab. I honestly can't decide if Havoc was an improvement. Havoc is also a contortionist, because why not? Make him a ventriloquist and a birthday clown while you're at it. Havoc stuck around for Mortal Kombat Armageddon, presumably to the delight of his parents, who were very proud of him. On the bright side, you can make him tear his own head off, so that's nice. Number 64, Shujinko, Mortal Kombat Deception, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. In Japanese, Shujinko means protagonist, Boy, were they rubbing it in. In the conquest mode of Mortal Kombat Deception, players spend their entire time wishing they could get to know someone with a personality instead. You do get to play different versions of Shijinko as he ages and progresses along his journey, but it's not as though spending more of his life with him improves the situation. He's dull, and the tragedy of his quest, he thought he was helping the good guys, but he was actually helping the bad guys, is literally the most easily predictable thing in a series called Mortal Kombat. Number 63. Cabal. Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat 11. Introduced in Mortal Kombat 3, Cabal didn't exactly stand out. Much of this was down to an uninspired design that made him look like a guy with his face stuck in a panini press. He improved through the next several games, but fans remained lukewarm, unlike presumably the Nini Press. His fatalities were singled out as being particularly disappointing. There was one accidental exception in the Mega Drive version of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, though, allowing Cabal to decapitate himself at will. Ugh. What's more, a further glitch allows you to sprout a whole other fighter from your rolling head. It's a memorable way to end a fight, I'll give him that. Number 62. Onaga. Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Only playable in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Onaga was intended to have been unlockable in Mortal Kombat Deception. This probably would have pleased Onaga, but we're not sure it would have pleased anyone else. That's not to say we dislike him, he's a gargoyle wearing a loincloth, of course we like him, but he makes for a more interesting boss than he does a fighter. The series likely realised this and has kept him off the playable roster since. Also, we're not taking the Puzzle Combat minigame into account, but his tendency to make it impossible to see what's going on doesn't make us feel any warmer towards him. Number 61. Mavado, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Initially, the plan was for Mavado to be named Malvado, Spanish for evil man, and to be a matador. This was scrapped due to we don't know really. There's no reason for any of that to be scrapped. Shin Megami Tensei already showed us what a scary matador fighter could look like, and that guy's just a few buckets of blood away from being a Mortal Kombat character already. What we got instead was a man in black with some muscles. I admit it's cool to have a fighter whose arsenal revolves around various kinds of hooks, but Mavado didn't stick around and everybody else found something else to hang their jackets on. Number 60. Motaro, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. In the console versions of Mortal Kombat 3, you could play as Motaro via cheat codes. He was a sort of half-demon, half-tiger, half-robot snake with hooves. 
In Mortal Kombat Armageddon, he returned to the series with a more traditional body shape, likely because the developers didn't feel like animating him the way he was. And I can't blame them. I could hardly stand looking at him. In his new form, he's more of a satyr and retains little of what made him unique in the first place. One has to wonder why they bothered reworking him so significantly rather than just giving us a new character, maybe even a good one. Number 59. Fujin. Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat 11. Fujin is one of few characters who debuted in mythology's Sub-Zero who did not rip out his own organs in shame. Perhaps anonymity helped. He didn't get a name until he moved on to the series proper. Fujin is a wind god, but even gods these days can't be too careful, so he also fights with swords and crossbows. Ed Boon is on record as saying he has no idea why a god would need a crossbow, so we don't feel too bad about being puzzled by that ourselves. Fujin has only appeared in four games, so we'll have to wait and see which way the wind blows. Number 58. Reiko. Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. A copy of a copy, Reiko took Noob Saibot's place in Mortal Kombat 4, with the developers simply swapping heads on the model. They felt the series had too many ninjas, and they were probably right, but decapitating and uh, recapitating one of them might not have been the most elegant solution. It certainly wasn't the most memorable. Oh, and believe me, both Peter and I will butcher many names on this list, but neither the games nor the developers can agree on pronunciation here. The voice actors refer to him as both Reiko and Rico, while the developers have called him Rico. Just don't call him late for dinner, right fellas? <laughs> Got him. Number 57. Triborg. Mortal Kombat X. One of only four characters introduced in Mortal Kombat X who didn't stick around for Mortal Kombat 11, the world did not mourn the loss of Triborg. At least his name is a clever pun. Tri means three, and Borg means Borg. He's technically a cyborg recreation of three other characters, Sector, Cyrax, Smoke, and Sub-Zero. Wait, actually, that's four characters. Maybe Quadborg just didn't sound as cool. A character incorporating moves from other fighters is not a bad concept, but it's been done more memorably than this. Or maybe I'm just bitter that they didn't call him Mortal Kombat. Come on, people, the name was right there. Number 56, Shinnok. Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat X. Mythology's Sub-Zero was almost impressively bad. It's the sort of thing we might play on Worst Games Ever if we were really, really mad at each other. Shinnok has at least one strike against him for originating as the final boss of that game. A physical manifestation of every minute of your life you will never get back. He was promoted to proper final boss status in Mortal Kombat 4, where he was clearly out of his league, looking more like a Flash Gordon villain than any anyone who should be taken seriously in a deathmatch. He made a few more playable appearances afterwards, so we admire his tenacity, but not much else. Number 55. Dagon. Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Dagon and his brother Taven made their debut in Mortal Kombat Armageddon. That was also their last appearance, need I say more. Dagon is the evil brother. All sets of siblings have an evil one, of course, and you can tell him apart from Taven by the fact that he's bald. This, too, is biologically sound. You see, evil hearts pump black blood, which gums up your follicles and inhibits hair growth. You can learn a lot from these games, you know. Dagon is a decent, if unremarkable, fighter, and he isn't all that memorable for being the main villain of his own game. I would say better luck next time, but thankfully I won't need to. Number 54, Taven, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Taven is the other character unique to Mortal Kombat Armageddon. He's the good brother, which means he's even more boring than Dagon. He is a bit more fun to control, however, and as the hero of the game's conquest mode, you'll have plenty of time to get used to him. During development, he was known as Bob, with his brother Dagon being known as Doug. This was a reference to Bob and Doug McKenzie, two Canadian brothers from the sketch comedy show SCTV. That means that Taven is the closest you can get to playing Mortal Kombat as Rick Moranis. Unless Rick himself turns up in Mortal Kombat 12, that is. Which is entirely likely at this point. Number 53. Lee May. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Deception, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. 
Lee May had a decent three game run and then disappeared from the roster, likely for good. She was not a standout character by any means, but she was a solid standard fighter. She might have been more interesting during the development process when she wielded the Karma as her signature weapon, but eventually this was assigned to Natara, robbing Lee May of potential personality in her moveset. She stood out slightly in Deadly Alliance for having more special moves than most other characters, but she didn't have much presence. In fact, you didn't even remember her until we brought her up, and now you will never think about her ever again. Number 52, Kung Jin, Mortal Kombat X. As with many other characters introduced in Mortal Kombat X, Kung Jin is a relative of a character from earlier games. In this case, he is the cousin of Kung Lao. Also, as with many characters introduced in Mortal Kombat X, this was the most interesting thing about him. Well, it would be if it weren't for the fact that writer Dominic Cianciolo confirmed him as being the first openly gay character in the series. That's notable for sure, but we do wish his fighting style were notable as well. It's it's nice to have an archer on the roster, no doubt, but in a series like this, that's not enough to stand out from the crowd. Number 51, Chameleon, Mortal Kombat Trilogy and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Like the others, but this one is all the colours of your imagination. He officially debuted in Mortal Kombat Trilogy, but was playable through cheat devices in both the Mega Drive and SNES versions of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Chameleon, as his name suggests, takes on the appearances of other fighters, well, just the other fighters he pretty much looks like already, and uses their moves. Whether or not this was a good concept, it proved to be unsustainable. He made only one other other appearance in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, in which he was reworked substantially and given a trimmed down moveset. He then went on to achieve every chameleon's dream by simply disappearing. Number 50, Moloch, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. In Deadly Alliance, Moloch was a 16 foot tall, devastating sub boss with, um, one ball. As with most bosses who become playable, he underwent a bit of a downgrade when he was added to the roster of Mortal Kombat Armageddon. He even lost his one ball. Still, he does retain some advantages, such as the immense difficulty of throwing him and his near immunity to projectiles. But without his one ball, there wasn't much else that made him unique. Okay, there was the mohawk all the way down his back, which isn't a look that most fighters could pull off, but that really was about it. The takeaway from this entry is that Moloch used to have one ball that was taken away from him, and so it's perhaps no surprise that a lot of people mispronounce his name as Moloch, as though it rhymes with ball. Number 49, Takeda Takahashi. Mortal Kombat X. Takeda Takahashi's introduction in Mortal Kombat X did not lead to a spot in Mortal Kombat 11's roster. It's entirely possible then that a future version of this list would see him fall quite a bit, simply on the grounds that he never left an impact. His fighting style is largely dull and pales in comparison to that of Jackie Briggs, who was introduced in the same game and with whom he is in a relationship. Lore tells us that he learned a few things from Scorpion, who served as his mentor, but unfortunately none of those things were how to leave an impression. <laughs> what a shame. Number 48, Sector. Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat 2011. Mortal Kombat's habit of replacing C's with K's really pays off sometimes, doesn't it? Sector with a C would be a pretty naff name for a fighter. Stick a K in there instead for Sector, though, and suddenly it's cool. Then again, anything is an improvement on his development name, Ketchup. Sector is a karate robot. It's hard to rank him any lower in this list for that reason alone. He's had an interesting history, too, debuting in Mortal Kombat 3, sticking around for a few games, then disappearing and coming back at regular intervals. He's in and out the roster like you wouldn't believe. I suppose being an evil machine, someone might have been trying to fix him by turning him off and on again. Number 47, Quan Chi. Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat X. 
We've covered a few fighters who appeared in Mythology's Sub-Zero so far. Quan Chi is another, but his path to Mortal Kombat proper is even longer and stranger. He made his debut in Defenders of the Realm, an animated series that ran for 13 episodes in 1996. With that and the Sub-Zero spin-off behind him, Quan Chi would have to work pretty hard to shake his stigma, but he succeeded, hanging around for a number of games since. The fact that he's been in the best and worst of Mortal Kombat is echoed in Ed Boon picking Quan Chi's fatalities as both his favourite and least favourite in the entire series. Number 46, Cyrax, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat 2011. Mortal Kombat, which is a title that doesn't sound like real words anymore, does love its super fighting robots. Cyrax was introduced alongside Smoke and Sector in Mortal Kombat 3, making it a great game for anyone who was a fan of being ripped apart by machines. Players and critics have been split over Cyrax though, describing his weapons as both useless and devastating. Then again, what do fans know? Due to his introduction in the first game that didn't feature Scorpion, they assumed that Cyrax was Scorpion inside of all that clanging metal. The joke was on them though, as Cyrax had no such crucial role in the lore of beloved characters. In fact, initially, he was just called Mustard. Add him to the Sector Ketchup and we'll soon have all the condiments. Number 45, Collector, Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat is obviously not a horror series as such, and yet it just as obviously contains certain horror elements. What, after all, is more horrific than a tax collector? Ooh. Well, most things are, of course. Tax collectors are just doing their jobs, and don't mean any degree of harm whatsoever, you prejudiced lot. All of which is to say that there isn't much to cover with Collector. He was introduced in the most recent game and has the most arms of any fighter thus far. That's sick for those playing along at home, but beyond that, there's little else to make him stand out. Good on him for being gainfully employed though, because fighting to the death can't pay much. Number 44, Kintaro. Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat 2011. It is impossible to overstate just how much early Mortal Kombat fans wanted to play as Goro. Players were sure they'd eventually get the opportunity, whether through a sequel, a cheat code, or good old reliable tantrums. Then Mortal Kombat 2 came around, and Goro was replaced by his non-union Mexican equivalent. It was a lesser substitute, but fans might have accepted Kintaro if that was the closest they could get to playing as Goro. Kintaro still wasn't playable though, really rubbing salt into that wound. He was finally made playable in Mortal Kombat Trilogy, but that game also made Goro playable, rendering this guy immediately obsolete. Number 43, Serena, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Serena debuted in the Mythology Sub-Zero spin-off, and then made her first playable appearance in Mortal Kombat Tournament Edition for the Game Boy Advance. All I can say is, I'm sorry Serena, and I'm sorry Serena. She was planned to appear in other games, only to be cut. Her first and only proper appearance then came in Mortal Kombat Armageddon. She's far from the easiest fighter to handle, but those willing to practice with her could hold their own. Own. That's hardly a recommendation though, and if Serena had a difficult time making an appearance when the roster was less crowded, do not bet on ever seeing her again. Number 42, Jarek, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Remember Kano? Jarek sure did. In fact, he remembered him so well that there was almost no difference between his fighting style and what we could already do with Kano. There is a law reason for this, Jarek studied under Kano, but that doesn't explain how he's able to perform the same laser eye fatality, being as he didn't have Kano's laser eye. Replacing Kano in Mortal Kombat 4 with a new character who fought identically is a weird choice that we still don't understand. Jarek gained a unique moveset in Armageddon for his final appearance, but after that, we don't know. We assume he died on the way back to his home planet. 
Number 41, Hotaru, Mortal Kombat Deception and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Hotaru is a Firefly-themed fighter. His name means Firefly in Japanese, if you pronounce it with a decent Japanese accent, which I'm sure I didn't do, and the Chinese characters for Firefly adorn the flags on his back. Also, Hotaru commands psychic control over lava, using it as both a weapon and a means of transportation, just like a real Firefly. He made his debut in Mortal Kombat Deception, but it was far from an earth-shattering one. After one more turn on the roster, in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, he's been relegated to cameos. It's the sort of thing that would have outraged fans of the character if the character had actually stuck around long enough to attract any. Number 40, Rain. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat 2011. Like the others, but this one is purple. Oh, <laughs> purple Rain. I get it. I hate it, but I get it. Rain is a nod to the artist formerly known as Prince, and then again eventually known as Prince. Rain even introduces himself as a Prince in Mortal Kombat Armageddon. I'm just surprised they didn't go even further and give him a Raspberry Beret. Ed Boon introduced the character as a joke in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, but the joke came to him so late in the game's development that Rain was only playable in the console ports. He appeared in a few games to follow, which presumably pleased someone one somewhere, but we don't know him. Number 39, Ferra and Tor, Mortal Kombat X. Ferra and Tor are representatives from a symbiotic race in which some of the population serve as riders and the rest of them serve as mounts. This is known in one-on-one -on -one fighting competitions as cheating. It's supposed to be a battle to determine which combatant deserves to live, people. Inviting your beefy younger brother to soak up the damage for you isn't exactly sporting. They are at least fun to use, and having a pair of characters working together does help them stand out as a novelty. But Ferra and Tor, or Ferra Tor as they're often referred to by the announcer, did not stick around for Mortal Kombat 11's roster, and we're pretty much fine with that. Number 38, Sindel. Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat 11. Mother of Kitana and Melina, and wife of Shao Kahn, albeit unwillingly, Sindel is an important figure in Mortal Kombat lore. If you're not interested in Mortal Kombat lore, then she is the one who whips her hair back and forth, she whips her hair back and forth, she whips her hair back and forth, etc, etc. Fan reaction is overall split, with Sindel being a fixture on lists of both the best female characters in the series and the worst, but love her or hate her, she's been a common name on the roster since her debut in Mortal Kombat 3, and that isn't likely to change anytime soon. Number 37, Kotal Khan, Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11. Within the universe of the games, Kotal Khan is not an Aztec warrior. He's a warrior from the fictional realm of Oshtek, totally different. He did, however, encounter real-world Mayans on Earth who worshipped him as Bullock Chab Tanum, it says here. All I know is it's an anagram of anal butch cub. Fan opinion on Kotal Khan is mixed, but as we've seen, latter day fighters could be much worse than this one. Also, he has a brutality in which he kills himself, denying his opponent the satisfaction of beating him themselves. But does that make him a badass or just bad? We can't decide, so he's at number 37. Number 36, Kira, Mortal Kombat Deception and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. In terms of the main series, no fighter introduced in Mortal Kombat Deception made it farther than the next game, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. For that reason, it's difficult to get a handle on many of these fighters, as they weren't given much time to develop or find an audience. For Kira, that may be unfortunate. Her knives, the evocatively named Dragon Teeth, could have led to an interesting fighting style down the line, and her backstory sees her posing as a man to sell weapons in the Middle East. Think Mulan, but in the illegal weapons trade. There was potential here, but so little of it was realised. Number 35, Dairu, Mortal Kombat's Deception and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. 
Intended to debut in Mortal Kombat's Deadly Alliance, Dairu wouldn't actually appear until Mortal Kombat Deception when the creative team ran out of better ideas. He's a mercenary who was once imprisoned for murdering the man who killed his family. His outfit mixes metal and cloth, and his fighting style is direct and largely traditional. If you're wondering why I'm spending so much time talking about superficial things, that's because Dairu doesn't really provide much worth discussing. He does have the ability to switch places with his opponent, which is handy in some very specific circumstances, but aside from that, he's just another guy killing guys. Number 34. Darius. Mortal Kombat Deception and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Who was it who ordered the killing of poor Dairu's family? It was Darius! if anyone cares. Not quite top 10 anime betrayals material, but so be it. Darius is a mean man, is the point, which is somehow not much of a distinguishing character trait in a series about people ripping intestines out of other people. He's been referred to as a blade knockoff, but I think that's deeply unfair. A blade knockoff would be at least a little cool by default. This guy is more of a knockoff of a knockoff. He's what you would get if you ordered Blade off Wish. Number 33. Blaze. Mortal Kombat's Deadly Alliance, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. If you want to know just how unnecessarily broad Mortal Kombat's lore can be, meet Blaze. Here he is, in his first appearance in Mortal Kombat 2. He doesn't even do anything, he just has an idle animation. Well, it turns out Blaze was tasked with guarding the last dragon egg, a thing in Mortal Kombat, apparently. After the egg hatched and Spyro was, no, sorry, something came out, he was free to pursue his dream of punching a lot of different people. Ed Boon has said Blaze is at the top of the food chain. We assume that's metaphorical, but this is Mortal Kombat, so it could also mean that he literally eats the other fighters. There's no way of knowing. Number 32, Shiva. Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat 11. You like Goro, right? How about Goro with breasts? Come on, tell me how you feel about looking at Goro with breasts. You can trust me. Tell me everything that goes through your mind when you see Goro with breasts. Goro with breasts made her debut in Mortal Kombat 3 because fans wanted to play as Goro. Those fans were rewarded for their patience with Goro with breasts. You were one of those fans. How did it make you feel? I'd like to get to the root of your strong emotional response to Goro with breasts. Did you walk in on Goro naked when you were young? Talk to me. Number 31. Cassie Cage. Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat X introduced Cassie Cage, the daughter of Sonya Blade and Johnny Cage. From her mother, she inherited her physical characteristics. From her father, she inherited a tendency to be insufferable. Whereas her father's insufferability came from his action hero posturing, Cassie's comes from a drawer of jokes the developers must have printed out from emails titled Forward Forward These Millennials. She's one of those damned kids with their earbuds and their airpods and their iPhones taking selfies during fatalities and posting them to the social webs. Honestly, it's not the character who's tiresome, it's the developers giving her stale jokes in place of a personality. Number 30. Smoke. Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat 2011. Like the others, but this one is grey and sometimes a robot. Smoke is an important part of Mortal Kombat history. He was the first playable, unlockable character in the series. Prior to this, hidden characters could only be fought against. Smoke began the tradition of expanding the roster with secret characters. In his non-playable debut in Mortal Kombat 2, he was a Scorpion clone. In fact, it could be argued that he didn't get a true moveset of his own until Mortal Kombat 2011. He's remained a consistent favourite throughout the years and still has one of the most memorable fatalities in the series. Oh look, Smoke predicted 2020, I know it was last year, but Smoke predicted 2020. God, I hope this year's not worse. Number 29. Chameleon. Mortal Kombat Trilogy and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. If you played Mortal Kombat Trilogy on the Nintendo 64, you didn't get Chameleon. Instead, you got Chameleon. Okay, they sound identical, but this one starts with a K and the other one starts with a C. Like the one that starts with a C, Chameleon uses the moves of other fighters. Also, like the one that starts with a C, she didn't stick around or make much of an impact. Her only other playable appearance was in the Wii version of Mortal Kombat Armageddon. She was a hit with fans, but that hasn't translated into staying power. Number 28. Noob Saibot. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat 11. Like the others, but this one is blue, which makes him Sub-Zero. 
That's not a joke, though it probably should be one. After Noob Saibot was properly introduced in Mortal Kombat 2, the first game was retconned so that the character we thought was Sub-Zero was actually Noob. Kind of a strange retcon, considering the entire character was born of an inside joke, his name combines the backward surnames of series creator Ed Boon and John Tobias. It was certainly worth rewriting history to include that. Anyway, Noob has since become a proper fighter in his own right, and his wishbone fatality is among the best in the series. Number 27. Nitara. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. We're surprised it took until Deadly Alliance for a vampire to appear in the series. After all, with all that blood splashing around, someone might as well drink it. Nitara debuted in that game and popped up again in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, but she hasn't been playable otherwise. We're not quite sure why. She's nimble and just corny enough to fit perfectly into a roster of over-the-top monster people. She's made cameos in other games, so we know the developers haven't forgotten about her. We just hope she makes a proper return in the future. We'd be very fang... We'd be very fangful. Thankful. I'll work on that joke and get back to you later. Number 26. Scarlet. Mortal Kombat 2011 and Mortal Kombat 11. Like the others, but this one is Scarlet. Or perhaps not? Well, okay, this one is Scarlet, but she did not originate as a real palette swap. For years, rumours circulated of a Mortal Kombat 2 glitch that gave Kitana a red costume, which fans christened Scarlet. It was up to Ed Boon to eventually state, flatly, that there was never a glitch that turned Kitana red. It was just an urban legend. It's one he found amusing enough to turn into an actual character, however, in Mortal Kombat 2011, and a well-received one at that. Fans must have been happy to play as a character they themselves dreamed up. Number 25. Frost. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat 11. Introduced in Deadly Alliance, Frost essentially wanted to be Sub-Zero. To be fair, I want that too. Frost was given a bit more character than that, though, being driven by feelings of envy and inadequacy that prevented her from being anywhere near as disciplined as her mentor. Her flaws make her one of Mortal Kombat's most interesting personalities, as they tend to run a bit deeper than her skills in battle. She disappeared after Armageddon, sort of the point of any Armageddon, but made a triumphant return in Mortal Kombat 11. We hope she sticks around. She's more interesting than the simple clone character she could have been. Number 24. Shang Tsung. Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat 11. The main antagonist of the first Mortal Kombat game, Shang Tsung was an homage to the character Lo Pan from John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China, something made more clear in the character's early design sketches. Ultimately though, he changed so much that he's been able to stand as his own character, fittingly a shape-shifting one. He's not earned himself much of a following beyond those who enjoy him for nostalgic purposes though, but that's not his fault. It's it's just that the series has had so many great characters over the years that the man initially at the top of the heap has had some trouble keeping up. Number 23. Shao Kahn. Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat 11. From one antagonist to the next, Shao Kahn was the main villain of Mortal Kombat 2, a role he filled in more games than any other character by the way, but he left his biggest mark on the series without even being on screen. Shao Kahn is the announcer in nearly every Mortal Kombat game. Finish him or her is a phrase that alone would have immortalised him without him being playable. He was playable though in home ports of Mortal Kombat 3 and in a few games beyond. But obviously, he's nowhere near as devastating an opponent when he's controlled by another human. He's a good fighter, but he's destined to be remembered for other reasons. Number 22. Kenshi. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat X. A telekinetic, sightless swordsman is almost certainly going to be cool by default. While most of the fighters introduced in Deadly Alliance made their final appearance in Armageddon, Kenshi has made several more appearances on the roster since. What's more, he's done so to rightful acclaim. He's definitely one of the better and more interesting latter-day fighters, with his sword-based combat feeling consistently satisfying. 
He is, in our opinion, one of the most underrated combatants, and one of the highlights of any game that features him. He was absent from Mortal Kombat 11, but we think he will eventually be back for round 2. Or, well, round 6. He's been in 5 games already. Number 21. Baraka, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat 11. Visually speaking, there's no question who stood out the most in Mortal Kombat 2's roster, and thanks to some remarkable redesigns through the years, he stood out in many other games as well. Baraka is a vicious mutant with enormous teeth and blades in his arms. Really, that's all we need to say to justify a high placement, but his consistent power and brutality mean he's always worth experimenting with. Fun fact, whereas Goro, the first this game's physically impossible fighter was a stop-motion model, Baraka was played by an actual human in a modified Count Orlok mask. It's Halloween every day when you're making Mortal Kombat. Number 20. Tanya, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat X. Mortal Kombat 4 was originally set to feature Katana, but the developers decided to replace her with a new character instead. They came up with Tanya, who may not have been an immediate hit, but who has proven to have staying power through the years. She's been playable in all but four of the games that followed, and was planned to appear in one of those until she was cut late in development. Unfortunately though, Tanya is one of very few ninja characters who refuses to wear a mask, and I bet she doesn't practice social distancing either. This is not the kind of dangerous behaviour I signed up for when I booted up Mortal Kombat. Number 19, Cetrion, Mortal Kombat 11. Introduced in Mortal Kombat 11, Cetrion embodies life, virtue, and nature, which, hey, is great and all, but you did just burn that person's face off with hot steam, so let's not act too high and mighty, shall we? She serves as both a sub-boss and playable fighter. She's definitely an interesting addition to the roster, but it obviously remains to be seen just how much of an impact she will have on the series. Her nature-based attacks have a lot of potential, and her moveset favours abilities that maintain distance, allowing fights to feel pretty unique. Also, her hair is made of seaweed. Is your hair made of seaweed? <laughs> Didn't think so. Match point to Cetrion. Number 18, Johnny Cage. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, Mortal Kombat X, and Mortal Kombat 11. Along with Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage was one of the few characters in the first game to have a surname. Actually, hang on a minute. Cage? Blade? Oh, these words suggest violence. Has anyone else noticed this? Are our children playing violent video games? Someone really needs to ban these things. Cage is a martial arts film star with decent fighting talent and a surfeit of arrogance. More unique is his bottomless capacity for reincarnation. Nation. Cage is killed in Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon, but he keeps on resurrecting. In fact, his ability to overcome death reminds me of another famous JC. <laughs> That's right, romance novelist Jackie Collins, whose writing career took several drastic downturns, but who always returned to a state of commercial success. Oh, amen. Number 17, Goro. Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat X. The first Mortal Kombat game certainly featured violence and gore that was over the top for its time, but the character designs were largely familiar to anyone who had played fighting games before. They were all humans, or humanoids, of similar builds, mainly distinguishable by the colours of their outfits. 
Then, you'd fight Goro, and suddenly, things got serious. This four-armed absolute unit stood out both visually and for his difficulty, and he remains one of the most recognisable characters in the series to this day. He wasn't properly playable until Mortal Kombat Trilogy, though he was technically playable via cheats in the Game Boy version of Mortal Kombat, which I refuse to discuss further. Number 16, Devorah, Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11. In 1992, Mortal Kombat was an immediate smash hit, and yet fans were understandably disappointed. Sure, they said, I can rip people's spines out, but why can I not stab them with my ovipositors and vomit fertilised eggs into their mouths? 23 long years later though, the series addressed that oversight with Devora, and I feel sick. Devora is a horrific bug woman who does all of the awful things you'd expect to be done during a Mortal Kombat fight, but somehow even more disgustingly. Now, we do mean that as a sort of compliment, to be clear. Devora is, if nothing else, an achievement in repulsiveness, and is one of the recent additions to the roster that we hope sticks around. Number 15, Gyrus, Mortal Kombat 11. Gyrus has the ability to manipulate the flow of time, preventing him from ever dying. One might consider that to be less than fair in fights to the death, but here we are, and it's not as though reincarnation or resurrection is a particularly rare thing in this universe. Cleverly, Gyrus can use his control of time to manipulate the length of the rounds, adding or removing time as the player sees fit. In addition to being a time mage, he is also a sand elemental, you know, like the sands of time, get it? Because even in its most recent game, Mortal Kombat cannot resist a good pun. Or, you know, just a pun. Number 14, Kano. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, Mortal Kombat X, and Mortal Kombat 11. Few images are more iconic to this series than a still-beating heart held aloft in victory. And that image belongs to Kano. It was his fatality in the original game. It caused gamers' jaws to drop in surprise the first time they saw it. The jaws of parents and politicians dropped for different reasons. Mortal Kombat was cited in the 1993 congressional hearings on video game violence, and a US House committee even screened footage of Kano's fatality as evidence that this trend could not continue unchecked. Kano certainly left his mark on the series in the usual sorts of ways that other high-ranking entries in this list did, but he also changed the way the franchise and the medium in general was viewed by the wider world, for better or for worse. Number 13, Jade. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat 11. Like the others, but this one is uh, Jade. She debuted as an unplayable secret character in Mortal Kombat 2, and her star rose when she became playable in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, establishing herself as every bit the fighter fans hoped she would be. As with all characters, her moveset has changed over the years, but she is overall known for her projectiles and her devastating combos. She's also known for her sex appeal, which led to a number of appearances outside of the games, including on G4's Girls Gone Wired. Cool. Jade remains one of the most popular and enduring Mortal Kombat characters, and rightly so. Number 12. Jackie Briggs. Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11. Jackie Briggs is the daughter of Jax, who was introduced way back in Mortal Kombat 2. After a lifetime of having his eyes gouged out with his own ribs, Jax decided his daughter should lead a normal life. The Mortal Kombat wiki refers to this as Jax being overly protective, which makes us wonder about the wiki author's understanding of parenting. Jackie showed up in Mortal Kombat X to disappoint her father, but also to delight fans, being both an interesting character and a solid fighter. Her training as a kickboxer makes her more grounded and realistic than most, a nice change of pace as the roster gets more and more outrageous. Number 11. 
Kung Lao, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, Mortal Kombat X, and Mortal Kombat 11. When developing Mortal Kombat 2, the creators decided they wanted a monk character. For inspiration, they turned to one of the most famous monks in pop culture, Odd Job, the henchman from Goldfinger. Quite how We Need a Monk became We Need Someone with a Deadly Hat, we don't know. We do know that Kung Lao became a memorable, versatile fighter as a result, and also became important to the series' wider presence. He starred alongside Liu Kang in the Shaolin Monks spin-off, and was the protagonist of the novelization by Jeff Rovin. There are characters who could be considered more classic, but not too many of them. Number 10. Liu Kang Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, <gasps> Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat... Oh no, hang on, Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11. <sighs> Liu Kang was designed specifically to be a more heroic figure than most of the others, with a less violent, less dirty fighting style that suited his honourable Shaolin background. This made him an easy choice for protagonist of both of the Mortal Kombat films and the Malibu comic series. He was one of the protagonists of Shaolin Monks, considered the best spin-off and just as frequently considered the only spin-off worth playing. It was well received, but is remembered for a banned advertisement that saw business people eating each other's hearts and being decapitated. Remember, Liu Kang was the least violent of the combatants. Number 9. Kitana Mortal Kombat 2, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, Mortal Kombat X, and Mortal Kombat 11. Like the others, but this one is royal blue. Fitting, as Kitana is a princess, much to the chagrin of her sister Melina. Can you tell which one of them is evil? Introduced in Mortal Kombat 2, Kitana immediately became a popular character, though not for the reasons the developers intended. Her combos, when properly abused, proved to be inescapable. This amused the developers, but of course they fixed the issue in later revisions. Even without such exploits, Kitana was and remains a formidable fighter. Her moveset relies on her hand fans, which are quick and bladed. Actually, could it be said that Kitana started the whole OnlyFans thing? Probably not. Why did I say it? Number 8. Reptile Mortal Kombat 2, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat X. Like the others, but this one is green. Reptile was the first hidden character in Mortal Kombat, though in this first game you could only compete against him. He was essentially a more difficult combination of Scorpion and Sub-Zero, hence his colour. Yellow and blue make green. He became playable in Mortal Kombat 2, where he exceeded all expectations with an expanded moveset and the introduction of his acid attacks. His fatalities have been among the most brutal in the series, reflecting his uh, reptilianness. The character has had immense staying power as well, appearing in all but three of the games we're covering on this list. Number 7. Jax. Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, Mortal Kombat X, and Mortal Kombat 11. Cybernetically enhanced super soldier Jax Briggs saw one heck of an upgrade following his debut in Mortal Kombat 2. By the next game, he flaunted the mechanical enhancements that would define him as a character and as a fighter. Jax's robot arms do a great job of masking the character's original concept, which was a kickboxer. Had the developers stuck with that idea, it's unlikely he'd be even half as memorable or interesting. He's appeared in almost every game since his debut and is nearly always considered a top-tier character. And it's difficult to argue with that, especially if you value your spine. Oh. Number 6. Raiden Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, Mortal Kombat X, and Mortal Kombat 11. Raiden, when someone asks you if you're a god, you say... Yes! Introduced in the first game with his distinctive outfit and ability to explode people's heads, Raiden knew how to make an impression. 
He's also, within the world of the games, the actual God of Thunder, which must make for a pretty big ego boost for anyone who manages to beat him up. Raiden's early popularity came both from his novelty and from his moveset, which easily allowed newcomers to hold their own against more experienced opponents. He's also one of the series' mainstays, appearing in every game we're covering today, aside from either version of Mortal Kombat 3. And we doubt he's going anywhere anytime soon, if ever. Number 5. Melina. Mortal Kombat 2, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, and Mortal Kombat X. Like the others, but this one is violent. And violent! When Mortal Kombat 2 was released, teenage boys around the world tried the new fighters, learned their moves, and experimented to find their secrets. Then those teenage boys triggered Melina's fatality, and sat silently for a full 90 seconds without blinking. Melina's deliberate overturning of the video game vixen trope, which was already musty by 1993, is still one of Mortal Kombat's best tricks. She continued to creep onto the roster over the years, typically outdoing herself for sheer viciousness every time. But nothing will ever match that legendary first appearance when nobody knew what she hid behind that veil. Number 4. Eren Black. Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11. A Wild West gunslinger might not be the most obvious type of fighter for Mortal Kombat, but he's a welcome one. Eren Black was adored by fans upon his debut in Mortal Kombat X, and having him stick around was a no-brainer. Certainly the love for him was helped along by the fact that he was voiced by Troy Baker, voice acting royalty who can do no wrong, but he was also very fun to play as. His pistol heavy attacks feel unique enough that he stands out for reasons other than his aesthetic. Also, one of his exchanges with Kano suggests that he personally killed Cobra, preventing the latter from showing up in any future games. That alone counts for a lot. Aaron Black deserves big congratulations for getting this high in the list, despite only appearing in two titles. Everyone else in the top 10 has about a dozen games to tediously read out before we get to the actual entry. Ugh. Just like number 3, Sonya Blade. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, Mortal Kombat X, and Mortal Kombat 11. The only female fighter in the first Mortal Kombat game nearly didn't make the cut. Only late in development did the creators decide against an all-male cast, scrapping Curtis Stryker and replacing him with Sonya. This was clearly the correct decision. Sonya remains one of the series' most popular and most balanced fighters. She's not usually as savage as most of her male, or admittedly female, adversaries, but her tough-as-nails demeanour and easy-to-grasp moves make her a welcome addition to any roster. In fact, she's been absent from only two proper games, and paved the way for every ass-kicking female to come. Not a bad legacy, really, for an afterthought. Number 2. Sub-Zero. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, Mortal Kombat X, and Mortal Kombat 11. Like the others, but this one is blue. Noob-related retcons aside, Sub-Zero is the only character to appear as a playable fighter in every game we're covering. His ability to freeze opponents made him stand out not just among the original game's roster, but among fighting game rosters in general, where moves as unique as this were still a novelty. His arcade fatality was certainly seared immediately into the minds of every young fan who saw it, and even when it was censored on the SNES, Sub-Zero still managed to have a very cool replacement. No pun intended. This character was so popular, even non-gamers knew his name, as we saw from this scene in Malcolm in the Middle. No one believes I beat the last level of Mortal Kombat. 
because that's just ridiculous. No one beats Sub-Zero. Of course, that scene is not entirely accurate, as there is one person who beats Sub-Zero. Time to say, get over here, to... Number 1. Scorpion. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat 2011, Mortal Kombat X, and Mortal Kombat 11. Like the others, but this one is yellow and also the best. It's impossible to top Scorpion, the fire-breathing, undead warrior who refused to rest until exacting revenge on the man who killed him, Sub-Zero. Of course, through the years, he's exacted revenge on the other 75 characters as well, many times over, but everybody needs a hobby. Scorpion has been playable in every game aside from Mortal Kombat 3, though that was rectified in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, where adding him alone would indeed have warranted the addition of the word Ultimate. Ed Boon, who also voiced Scorpion's original taunts of GET OVER HERE, has said that Scorpion is his favourite character, and that the series wouldn't be the same without him. Indeed, Scorpion is THE Mortal Kombat fighter, and quite possibly our favourite undead martial artist skeleton ghost to have ever impaled people with spears and jerked them around against their will. Well done, bud. Good job. And that is every Mortal Kombat fighter ranked from worst to best. How many of their names did we mispronounce? Whose lore did we get completely inexcusably wrong? If you could introduce your own totally original character to the series, what colour would their identical ninja suit be? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you have suggestions for other every X ranked from worst to best videos, do let us know. We love being told that we're incorrect and can't wait to do it again. Again very soon. You can follow Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben. And I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.